at that time, if you tell people I'm going to be an artist, then people will just stretch their head. Then your parents probably will scold you, say that you know this is a not a very good idea. You can't earn a living. When I look at a piece of art and putting a price tag to it, it's a it's kind of a very emotional thing. I always believe that good art will always find an audience. If I were to be able to put up good art at the right price, I think uh, I'll be able to sell something. I'm Jeffrey Wanley, uh, architecturally, professionally trained. The spark started even long, long ago. Yeah, I mean, the first spark is the love with my wife. We were married in 1999, so both of us love the arts. We had a dream and a vision that uh, maybe we could do something in this line together. But she's also a designer, I mean, also an architect, and we love the arts. I would say I'm putting everything under one uh, one environment, which is the uh, setup that we have now, which is Maya and Associates, eh? and Maya Gallery is part of it. We are putting everything together, all our skills and expertise, uh, with my wife and, and, and our partners. Maya is different. We are not just a gallery that just uh, buy and sell art. We have a very good relationship with all the artists. We get into a not just a working relationship, but it's a relationship that we would like to uh, work together to to help uh, to help. Uh, I would say increase the level of awareness awareness of the the arts uh, scene. presence at the gallery area. La. So Maya Gallery has a, a booth. La. At, at the end of the day, consciously one wants to do something and one shares the vision and one works towards it. Also on top of it, a balance between the bread and butter issues and all that. How to, for us to create, to sustain. I Mandaki, I Mandaki. See the three meters ah, wide. Three meters. Nothing comes just a springboard just like that. It'll take time. It'll take time to build. You can't rely just on social media. Social media is also a very good platform. We can't deny today's generation is it, and today's world is like that. But the personal contact is important. For example, an artist, we just don't buy and sell the artwork. The artwork speaks a certain language. The artwork has some content. So getting to know the artwork and buying something, whether out of emotion or out of investment, is also to understand exactly what the art is all about. And a little bit more of the artist. All this information into one panel, Asuna. You put all this information about protégé and mentor into one panel. It's just not buy a shampoo or buy a, a other products, you know, that you see, that can you just talk about it. You just read about it and that's all. And I want to... This has been also one of our vision, is it, to impart in, in, in the areas of arts education. We, we had programs, you know, not just for, for so schools and private institutions, even corporate bodies too. Yeah. So the, the, our approach is uh, it's, it's different in that manner. Well, actually, uh, we are an art gallery, you know, selling paintings of 
uh, we, we mainly specialize in Singapore art, uh, local art, and uh, we do more of aesthetic art. So basically, the, this gallery is about close to 800 square feet. So if you look at the design, um, now you can see that the center is, there's a sort of a partition. So actually this space was designed such that if the business didn't pick up well, I can jettison off half the space and return to the landlord. And also, we have my operating nerve here, which is my studio. The walls are partitioned so that to create more wall space because uh, wall space is uh, very crucial for gallery business. We have uh, some so-called space-saving initiatives like this one. You know, we can hang more paintings. Yeah, and then uh, we have designs like this. So it's like a wallet where you can put a lot more paintings. Yeah. There are a lot of factors driving this. First thing, we don't have a lot of capital. Having said that, capital is a cost itself, right? So we have to think of a low cost way to do it. Second thing is, no, this art thing uh, is it's not a mass market product. We don't go on volume, so to speak. In business, there are many ways to do the same thing. Of course, you can throw in money to advertise, market. For us, we take a different route. When I moved here, I started to do mature artist work. Then I asked myself, there are a lot of galleries, uh, very established gallery doing this artist. So who am I, you know? There must be a competitive advantage. So first, I position myself as a knowledgeable gallery. In fact, we have talks. For every exhibition, we have reading materials. We talk about heritage. We talk about technical skill in appreciating art, which a lot of other galleries don't do. Secondly, I call it the budget airline concept. Because what the customer wants is actually a good piece of work at a reasonable price on their, their home's walls. So uh, we, with lower overheads, uh, we buy time and then words of our emergence slowly spread out among the circle. So it's, you know, it's people talk, yeah, so-called like referrals. So we, we, we depend on that. This morning, I'm attending uh, Mr. Ong Kim Seng, uh, I think a very renowned Singapore watercolorist, uh, his uh, painting lessons. Yeah. Now, I'm an artist. It's advantageous to me because then I can join artist gathering. We have a session where um, amateur artists meet. So I met this this artist there. Then I because I'm an artist I know. I, I know he has pretty good skills. Then I know that he's very passionate also. Because these are the things that actually uh, I mean signs that this guy will make it. Yeah. So then after that yeah, we decided to take him. Yeah. I mean you have to be in a circle, you obviously got to Open your eyes and watch. If you are influential gallery, then of course uh, many artists will want to look for you. But if you want to go up, I mean look for artists that's higher than you, your status, uh, your gallery status, then yeah, I guess you have to move to them. There's one side which is the power of the uh, gallery. There's another side which is the power of the artist. So if you look, it's like looking for or partner, right? I mean, a soulmate. In the old days, we say, you know, you must be of the same status. 
Yeah, so if you want to look down, it's very easy. You want to look up, you know, it's kind of more difficult. Yeah, I think it's the same kind of relationship here. We call this exhibition The Journey. The journey of us, Maya, from the point of conceptualizing to reality. There are five artists here, three as resident artists and two of our friends uh, in Bali. So uh, here we try to capture Bali in its natural state. On the left here is uh, from Huda, he's a Balinese. Sunar does acrylic oils and all that. So these are some of Sunar's works in Chinese ink. In fact, there are a couple of Chinese artists and Chinese guests that came in. So when they look at Sunar's work, they thought it was done by a Chinese master. Actually, it's done by our local Singaporean boy. It's very, very interesting. Today, we're going to have a meet the artist session. It's just a very relaxed and public where people would like to meet and, and talk to the artist and the artist will be able to share, share their works, share their thoughts and share their feelings about what, what we have here. So I think, I guess, this is a good engagement and it's a good awareness and also it's a learning thing. When I look at a piece of art and putting a price tag to it, it's, a, it's kind of a very emotional thing because uh, I have to consider a lot of things. Uh, I will see the artist because he needs to survive and I will see our relationship with him or her to see how far can we go together. And the other emotions would be looking at the art and how it's been speaking to you, you see. Putting a labeling and price tags is important, but the, the, the experience to just to put it there, a lot of considerations. Yeah, because it involves survival for the artist as well as the gallery. Buy and sell is one of the hard truths that we need. We need, yeah, we need to 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 so-called recover operations, operational uh, costs, and all that. Art is also in a kind of quiet taste. Right? You you go through a certain process to, to to buy art also, right? And we are here also to share. Maybe through the sharing, for them to appreciate the art, appreciate and get to know the artists themselves. Because I think here we're just not selling the artwork. Right? We are also here, in a way, celebrating our local artists and also celebrating the art that we have, you see? And we would like to share that. The risk is, at the last minute, the artist will pull up. Then, but the, the other risks are also the monetary kind of thing, that there's a lot of investment is put. Time, effort, lots of planning for marketing, for example, to get the message across to the other side. But I think the bigger objective, bigger objective of where we want to go, I think that's, that's more important. At the end of the day, facts are being facts, we need to eat. Right? So it is also a concern on bread and butter issues and all that. Doing something that you wanted to do, right? doing something that you are passionate about, there is very difficult to draw the line between a business and something in the passion. Yeah, it's, already, it's already part of you. There's no real method. Every institution, organization or a company has its own ways. There could be some basic rule of thumbs. A lot of it depends on many other factors that we need to look at. The factors of our operation costs, the factors of your relationship with the artist, the, the factors of the market, the factors of the environment, of the current environment in the arts. But more importantly is the first step. First step is that, uh, yes, if we feel confident with whatever we have now, the right team, the right mindset, so we just have to give it a go.
Uh, when I first started out, Art Commune is just a vehicle for me to you know, pay my bills so that I can carry on with what I want to do. Uh, but having said that, uh, as it is now, uh, it's a little bit different because there are more stakeholders now. And uh, we are also coming to promote some younger artists. I always believe that good art will always find an audience. If I were to be able to put up good art at the right price, I think uh, I'll be able to sell something. So we went around to look for some good works that are priced cheaply because you see the thing about the art world is the price is always very dependent on your fame, right? So if it means that actually there are some artists who are good but they are not famous so their art works is cheap. So I, I'm trying to do that market. At that time, I opened my shop in Chinatown Point. The rent was much lower because Chinatown Point was, at that time, is the cheapest in so-called CBD areas. After moving here, my cost went up quite a lot. The rent is three times more. So much pressure, you know. It's... Then I realised that my old model can't work because uh, it's very difficult for young artists to sell works. I mean, in the past, I sell two pieces a month, I'm okay. But here, there's no way. So I went around with the networking that I have, checked around in the gallery circle, and then I found partners who are willing to come in, and then we shifted our focus a bit. I started to sell more, I would say more expensive stuff. Now my average piece maybe is uh, between 8, about 8K. Our community is here to participate in the affordable affair. The business concept behind this is that uh, I think in the past, art has only two segments. One is the no brand, you know, the pasta malam type. The other type is the LV, right, very expensive. But there's no, uh, there's nothing in between. So I think the affordable affair is here to fill up this market. This is our store, so we need to make some changes to the booth. Because buyers are very funny. They see a piece they like, they sold, then they're very sad with it. They uh, go somewhere else. In the gallery business, do a lot of hard work. Not so romantic, like, wow, very flashy. The rent is about 6,000 plus, plus all the miscellaneous. You probably got to have 10, 10K investment before you can even come in. Yeah. So you got to sell a lot of pieces in order to just to recover costs.